what is up it is Berlin welcome or welcome back to my channel hi I hope you're having a great Wednesday so far now I am about to sit and do my face and I thought I'd come and get into the drama with you guys that is involving Ethan Klein H3 Hila Klein and also Will Smith and that Oscar slap because people are still talking about it on social media people are talking a lot more about the way that Ethan has reacted to having people call into his podcast to talk about it and share their perspective about the slap and about how they thought that there was some kind of race issue going on all this stuff now ethan i really think his take on all of this is kind of a little bit problematic not for the reason that he's saying will shouldn't have used violence and slapped chris rock I actually agree with Ethan on that part. I don't think that, you know, Will Smith should have got up on that stage at the Oscars, slapped Chris Rock. I don't think he should have done that. So I'm in agreement with Ethan there. But what I'm not in agreement with Ethan is how he handled the situation afterwards. When he had people call into the H3 podcast to discuss it, there was a girl called Madison and Ethan was quite kind of abrupt and he was talking over her a lot when she was trying to explain that you know she's tired of comedians who are men black men kind of ragging on black women you know she was putting her perspective across Ethan did nothing the whole entire time but talk over the girl and it looked really bad for Ethan because why ask people to call into your podcast if you don't actually want to listen to what they've got to say you know what i mean and i'm this is what i'm seeing a lot of the hate street fans say as well you know particularly the poc hate street fans are saying hang on a minute you were speaking over poc who were trying to explain something to you and that's not cool you know i personally don't think that will smith should have got up on stage at the oscars and done what he did he's apologized he's put out a statement on instagram also jada pinkett smith has put out a statement or a little quote it's not even a statement girl it's just a quote saying oh now's the time for healing and i'm like girl really you you were trying to play this off as will somehow being a victim when it was will who got up on stage and slapped the shit out of chris rock i'm like nah i'm not about that but let me shut up let me start prepping my skin and doing my makeup and we can talk some more so i'm gonna go into my jeffree star moisturizer the magic star moisturizer because this absorbs really quickly and i love it so we're gonna get some of this on while we talk ethan i do really really think he's hypocritical i really really do and i'm gonna get into why as we get more into this video but first let me prep my skin and i'll get on with it so we're moisturized we've also got the jeffree star eye cream under eye cream down as well so now my next step is i'm going to use the nimia where it all starts cream for a makeup base using this one as my primer this one's got like some kind of pearlescent sheen in it so it almost makes you look like you've applied highlighter which is cute if you want to use it like without makeup also if you want to use it on your body like on your chest your arms shoulders that's really cute but back to the topic of ethan klein and this famous will smith slap of chris rock at the oscars back to this because people are getting quite heated on twitter ethan kind of got a little bit cancelled on twitter he's made a whole podcast talking about that as well and it's getting really kind of silly you know I think either way you look at this there's no excuse for violence like just because somebody made a joke that offended you there is no excuse for physical violence I think everybody agrees about that part but Ethan speaking over people who were sharing a different perspective that's not cool you know and the other thing that I'm going to bring into this video the other thing that I'm going to mention about Ethan Klein is Ethan Klein is here 
sticking up for Chris Rock, trying to take up for comedians, stick up for comedians and say, oh, you can't get offended about comedians telling a joke. Now, the thing that I really want to know is where was that energy from Ethan Klein when he was trying to cancel Shane Dawson in 2020? Ethan Klein sat on his podcast with Trisha Paytas and he tore into Shane Dawson for old jokes. So now, why all of a sudden is Ethan trying to say, I'm friends with loads of comedians, you know, I'm sticking up for comedians, comedians shouldn't be censored, comedians should be allowed to tell inappropriate jokes without people getting violent or without people, you know, resorting to that. And it's like, it's kind of hypocritical of Ethan to sit on his podcast and say, oh, Will shouldn't have got violent, Will shouldn't have reacted that way to somebody's humour when Ethan and Trisha reacted the way that they reacted to Shane's old humour and used that against him to try and cancel him. You know what I mean? When I look at it like that, I'm like, how are you going to sit there and try and defend comedians? But when it was Shane Dawson's comedy, oh, that wasn't okay. That wasn't all right. Okay, I've got my colour corrector down as well. And you can see that glow from that Nimia where it all starts cream. Look, it's literally like highlighter. Beautiful. Anyway, let me shut up and get back into it. So, Jim Carrey also spoke out about this in an interview. He spoke out and shared his view. And honestly, I agree with Jim Carrey's take on all of this. You know, Jim Carrey, at the beginning of this clip, he says, you know, oh, it's very clear that we're not the cool kids anymore, meaning that comedians who are a little bit kind of outspoken and, you know, maybe a little bit politically incorrect. Oh, maybe now's not the time for comedians like that. Now that everybody wants to be more woke and more kind of progressive, you know, it seems that there's this kind of weird kind of dichotomy going on between, you know, progressive woke people and comedians who tell kind of bad taste jokes, you know. Unfortunately, the comedians who tell bad taste jokes are kind of getting it in the neck from the progressive woke, very leftist side, you know, who just, oh, want to be offended about absolutely everything. And it's sad, you know, I really do agree with what Jim Carrey had to say in this clip. You watched it unfold and then what happened after? I was sickened. I was sickened by the standing ovation. I felt like Hollywood is just spineless, en masse. And uh, it just, it really felt like, oh, this is a really clear indication that uh, we're not the cool club anymore. There was some question today about if anyone else had walked from the audience and done that, they would have been escorted out by security or maybe even arrested. The police asked, asked Chris if he been. wanted to file charges. They asked Chris, do you want to file charges? And Chris apparently said, no, he did not. He doesn't want the hassle. I, I'd have, I'd have uh, for, announced this morning that I was suing Will for $200 million because that video is going to be there forever. It's going to be ubiquitous. You know, that insult is going to last a very long time. If you want to yell from the audience and disapprove or sh show a disapproval or say something on Twitter or whatever, you, you know, you do not have the right to even smack somebody in the face because they said words. No, no, I agree. I, I think we all agree on that. I just thought, Jim, that it escalated to that. You know what I mean? That it escalated to that level. It didn't escalate. Mm -hmm. It came out of nowhere because Will has something going on inside him that's frustrated. And I, I, I wish him the best. I really do. I don't, I don't, you know, mm -hmm. I don't have anything against Will Smith. He's done great mm -hmm. things. But that was have not a to... good moment. It cast a, a pall over everybody's shining moment last night. You know, a lot of people worked really hard to get to that place and to have their moment in the sun and to, to get their award for the really hard work they did. And, a, and, a, and it, it is no mean feat to go through all the stuff you have to go through when you're nominated for an Oscar. It's a gauntlet of devotion that you have to do. And, uh, and you know, just it was just a selfish moment to cast a pall over the whole thing. Jim Carrey smacking the nail firmly on the head there because this slap is all anyone has been talking about regarding the Oscars. Nobody's been talking about the fashion or anything else. You know, it's all been about Will Smith slapping Chris Rock. So it has completely taken over the whole event. And it's like, you know, it seems like a publicity stunt. But, you know, it started a conversation. So I guess there's that. 
it started a conversation between people on social media you know it started some conversation with Ethan Klein on his H3 podcast about is this a race issue is this black women being the butt of a joke you know I personally don't think it was about black women being the butt of a joke I personally agree with what Jim Carrey said you know this is a case of Will Smith choosing to react the way that he reacted, having a problem within himself, that he then made that choice to get up on the stage and slap Chris Rock. It's a problem within Will Smith. You know, it's not a problem that comedians are up on stage telling jokes. To me, that's just never going to be the problem, you know. It's all very personal, you know. It's how you choose to react to these jokes that people say. You know, there's no, oh my God, you know, this is a race issue. There's no oh my god, you know, we're tired of comedians. It's stupid to say that in my mind, you know. So, in that respect, yes, I agree with Ethan Klein, but the trouble is that on the H3 podcast, Ethan Klein didn't want to listen to anyone from his own team who was trying to say, hey, you know, well, this girl's trying to talk to you and she's trying to explain her perspective. Ethan Klein just fully spoke over this woman who was trying to explain a different perspective and share a different point of view, which to me, that's the whole point of a debate. You know, that's the whole point of a discussion. It's not just one person's perspective. You're supposed to listen to like everybody's perspective and maybe you learn something, maybe you change your mind. But Ethan just kind of steamrolled in over this poor girl, Madison, didn't let her talk really. And it was uncomfortable to watch. But Ethan is not at all sorry for his actions. He's been speaking about it a lot over on his podcast. He's clearly not sorry at all for his actions in the way that he dealt with the callers who called into the H3 podcast, which is just a little bit shitty, in my opinion. Um, so I don't apologize. I know I'm not racist. I know I have prejudices, right? I'm working on it. I have prejudices. I think most people have prejudices that I'm aware of and working on and stuff like that. You know, I'm not racist. I don't think so. You know, I'm a, I can even admit that, you know, at times I think and do racist things, but only because I'm ignorant and it's something I'm working on. It's not like I'm OK being racist. Right. You know, I'm not afraid of talking about serious topics. And it seems like a lot of these people just don't want me to talk about. It. I'm not afraid of thinking about it. I'm not afraid of talking about it. And I'm not afraid of being called a racist either. You can say whatever you want about me. But, you know, listen, as somebody who has who just recently had someone come to my house and threaten violence on me for a really dumb tame joke um as someone who's friends with a lot of comedians who now more than ever people feel emboldened to go attack comedians on stage um it just seems that even with all that context which is important right and interesting to know it just doesn't justify what happened. And I, and I, you know, I just think it's really sad that I can't have an opinion about that without being called racist 200,000 times on Twitter and in the comments and stuff like the man hit another dude for a joke. It doesn't even really matter if you think it's tame or not, but like the precedent that it sets when you have hordes of people defending that action i mean you have a lot of people you know criticizing will smith but the amount of people who are ride or dying like i saw a youtube video today of a, of a girl who said uh will smith slapped chris rock and he deserved it i'm sorry guys but like just enabling violence in this way is insane and this just kind of made me laugh out loud because Ethan's sitting there, wow, wow, I can't have an opinion without people calling me racist. I can't have an opinion. Why can't I have an opinion about this? Why can't I say that violence isn't cool and have an opinion about this without people calling me racist? Ethan is missing the whole fucking point there for me. He's missing the whole point. It's not that he can't have an opinion about what Will Smith did being wrong. It's the fact that he wouldn't listen to anybody else's perspective or anybody else's viewpoint. That was what pissed people off. You know, if you're going to open your podcast up to live callers and then all you're going to do is speak over them the whole time, it looks bad for you. It looks really, really bad for you. 
it looks like you just don't want to listen to anyone else's perspective it really does you know which is stupid if you've got a podcast that is based around having discussion about kind of hot topic events and dramas that are going on stupid absolutely stupid People are also mad with Ethan because he insinuated that Will Smith is somehow abusive to his wife behind closed doors with one of his tweets. People are pressed about that, they're mad about that, you know, because they're saying he's kind of furthering the narrative that black men are violent. People are not happy with Ethan and his tweets about that situation. When Ethan's own behaviour, if you look at Ethan's own behaviour, you know, his kind of whole family seems to be in a big drama, you know, with everything that went on on Frenemies with Trisha Paytas, you know, the way that Ethan sat there and tore people apart on Frenemies with Trisha Paytas, you know, so he's no better than somebody getting up on stage and punching someone. Ethan is really no better. Absolutely not. But he wants to criticise Will Smith for punching someone when he's been one to be on the internet going after people's sponsors trying to cancel people doing all of that mess it's like Ethan you know look at your own family as well look at Hila Hila is coming on Twitter saying oh I don't need my husband to stand up for me you know when somebody says something about me I don't need my husband to stand up for me and it's like yeah well your husband worked with Trisha Paytas when Trisha Paytas called Hila the C-word and talked all that mess about her. And Ethan didn't say fuck all. He didn't say anything. He didn't stand up for Hila at all in the slightest. Not in the slightest. If I was Hila, I would be saying like, dude, why are you working with somebody who's called me the C-word? Who's, you know, read me into the ground saying that I'm a shit mother and everything like that. If I was Hila, I would be mad at Ethan for that mad you know i would leave his ass i wouldn't be putting up with that no no you know and it's not about needing somebody to stick up for you it's just about basic respect you know if i was married to ethan and you know trisha had talked all that shit about me i wouldn't have let her get away with it i really wouldn't have i mean i don't know about you guys i don't know what you guys think about that but i really wouldn't have let trisha paytas Call me a shit mother, call me the C word, all of that stuff. No, no. But Ethan, he let all that happen. And because Will Smith has defended his wife, now he's like, oh, Will Smith shouldn't have done that. It's like, Ethan, who are you to say what Will Smith should or shouldn't have done? You know, when you don't stand up for your own family, you don't stand up for your own wife, you make that decision to work with people who called her the C word, who dragged her into the ground like Trisha Paytas did. You made that decision. So where's your moral compass, Ethan? I don't think he's got one. And on that note, I'm going to love you and leave you guys. I'm going to go get into a look with a wig, finish my makeup, everything. And I'll be back with another video for you soon. So let me know what you think about all this Ethan Klein drama. Take care, stay well, and I'll see you soon. Bye.